So Pablo sent my card this morning. Um, it is ritual. Now, most everyone, I, I forgot to say last video that what, <laughs> I said what she didn't decide to do, which was the silver back, right? But what she did decide to do is draw a card. That was kind of, that's kind of the two basic choices she had. Um, usually you're just drawing a card though. Could have also taken this card. That didn't look particularly interesting. So she drew a ritual. Um, both, uh, both Wolf and Wolf Wolf, they both decided to keep their cards. And that, you know, that sometimes what your what the other players do gives you a, a strategy tip. There's definitely a good reason to keep their cards. However, with her, um, do it now and her pet peeve being procrastination, she's not going to worry about what other people are doing, and she's not going to worry, she, since she's kind of caring too, she's not going to worry about people taking her cards. So she has to decide, she's going to play the card right now, she has to decide which side she wants to do it on. I think she would probably prefer this side. Um, so she's going to go ahead and get an elder increase, give herself two elders, and that also does that. Does she want to do any population actions? I think she is going to want to do a population expansion. Um, one, two, three, four, five up here. So one thing that's happened to me is every time I've played the desert, the tundra turns to desert and I lose guys. Typically it's after I've domesticated the giraffe. Um, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. So I was a bit hasty in moving that population, thinking that it would, before drawing a card, thinking that there would be nowhere for the population to go other than where I placed it. I guess I could have um, made an assault on Wolf Corbett's uh, uh, northeastern African unit. I uh, and and so I, you know, I then drew a card to see if I would actually do that, but um, I didn't. I drew Ka, who is someone I've played with before. Ka, like cat. Um, Ka is in marketing research. Secret fantasy to see every country on every continent. I love it when they have geographic goals. Because that makes it very easy for me to make certain choices. Um, so she wants to expand. She's into expansion. So maybe she would want to, to attack at some point in the future. Um, abandoned Citroen in Frankfurt, main airport due to terrorist threat. So I think, I think I've determined since I first drew this card that Citroen is a car. And so she just left at the airport because there's a terrorist threat. I, I guess she never came back for it. She hates cigarettes. She'd like to meet Linda Ellerby. I'll have to research as to who that is. Um, personal motto is let it happen. That happened. That's kind of different. That's at odds a little bit with with her her mother Pegasus, so to speak, um, who's more about doing it. You know, she's more about letting it happen. So I I guess I guess she'll just kind of, you know, although she has this goal to see every continent, I don't think she'll directly go for it. I think she'll allow herself to drift there. She's most proud of her two children, um, which will be interesting because if she does a population increase, I'll think of it in a way as her child, and so. Um, the first two population increases that come from a Ka cube, whoever's playing those cubes, are going to be important to her. She's voted most naive in school. She's outgoing, stubborn, and outspoken. So Ka, and she's, I think, one of the few, the only real people card I actually can think of that has two real people on it. So that's great. Um, I went ahead and entered all my things. I don't know if there's anything else to report. Oh, there was, there was, it's possible that I'm not allowed to talk to the other players yet. Um, so I'll have to, I, 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 I made my, 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 um, diplomatic entreaties to Wolf Corbett public, um, and it was told to me that we couldn't make deals yet, but I, I feel like it's, I looked at it as table talk, you know, it's just us talking across the table, there was nothing binding. Um, so I'll have to wait for a word back on that, because I, I clarified that I wasn't, you know, whatever he, we decided he wouldn't have to do, or just be like, it's like, hey, you want to get out of my way here? Come on, be a dear. It's later on in the day now, and the, the whole diplomacy questionnaire one has been settled. Um, basically, you're allowed to do some sort of discussing is what we came up with, but you're not allowed to make deals, which is kind of what I was going for anyway. So um, that's great. I also realized during the day, actually, was, I, I was kind of rushing this morning to do the filming. Um, this is kind of filming. It's a little bit different than normal. This is more akin to the filming I do with Rock and Horse Dreams in that it all um, very much had to, it was very keyed into time. Like I couldn't just wait until I actually had a good block of time to film to film. 
like I do with the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, or with reviews or whatever else, um, I have to I have to keep it going because the game keeps going. Now I'm gonna have a quiet spell, right? Because it's the weekdays and people are busy and it's not my turn anymore. I've gone through my turn. Uh, but anyway, that's taken care of. But I realized today that I probably should have drawn a, a, pe a real people card for the Elder. Um, which I think will set up kind of an interesting situation because, you know, you're going to have cards. People are going to be, be cultural representatives. Like each of these cards is basically sort of a representative of, uh, of a particular cultural personality, right? Um, and that's going to deal with population, but then the elders are also going to have uh, a certain cultural personality, and it could get to be so that, you know, if people end up getting more than one cubed, that someone um, is partially represented in, uh, in, in the economic side of things, but also in terms of the common man, which is, which is more the population, you know, the numbers versus the elite. So um, I got to draw a card for that. Um, I have some interesting sort of uh, um, interesting sort of uh, kind of an oligarchy is kind of how I'm thinking larger decisions will be made. One thing I have to decide upon while I'm shuffling that um, I would love to solicit some public comment is what happens when the cubes leave. Like if you're an elder, if you're if one, a real person card uh, is is representative of the culture of an elder and that elder goes away um, does that person still get to play or are they out and do I draw a new card uh, I think it's maybe more realistic to have draw a new card perhaps um, my friends here um, but hey Mike hey. I'm, uh, I'm filming for the second video of my play by forum thing right now. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I'm about to draw a card for the next uh, cultural personality archetype. Um, so I kind of lost my train of thought. It's not your fault. But um, so anyway, so do I cycle, do they get to, once they're in the game, do they get to stay in the game? Or if their cube gets pulled off the map or out of the elder pool, are they then gone? And do I then draw another one to replace them? I kind of like both both answers. I think um, the the whatever I'm supposed to represent in this game will have a little bit more of a, a, a stable personality um, if I keep the same players. But I like the it, it, I don't know. Um, but on the other side of it, you know, uh, I think cultures change quite a bit. But then you know, since these are these are represented by people, maybe they can also change over time. So. Um, I'm kind of I'm leaning both ways at the same time, um, you know. One way, if if they if they are gone, you know, that's gonna that's gonna make for a lot of more self-preservation in a cube, which um, which seems a little more realistic to me, but isn't isn't doesn't map as well into how you normally play the game. Because sometimes you'll you'll sacrifice a cube. For example, if I were to do that silverback maneuver on the first turn, you, you would sacrifice a cube to, to get out of Africa, but um, you know, the the card wouldn't do that if that meant they were out of the game. Because I always play with the assumption that everyone wants to play. Alright, so let's draw a, a card and then I have to greet my friend and do something else. Um, last time he came over he was late, so I didn't want to just sit here and do nothing and wonder when he was going to come. Um, so I decided to start filming and then, lo, he's uh, kind of on time. I don't know what time it is, but it seems like he's close to the time. Um, it's not to fault him. Just talking. All right, let's see who's going to be our first elder of the game. Ooh, he he is an elder. Um, this is Little Red, and he's in international sales. Um, his secret secret fantasy is to stay home for a month. I bet he travels a lot. I think that's what, that's what he's saying by that. An unusual fact about Little Red is he's, he's been in five countries in one day. And then in the parentheses here, it says it's the same day. Um, that is that is pretty impressive. Uh, it depends if he's in Europe or not, or you know some some countries are very closely packed. Um, his pet peeve is yuppie drivers. I don't. I, I wonder what um, driving traits he ascribes to yuppie drivers. He but that's a very common pet peeve is drivers of different sorts on these cards. Those of you who follow the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament will know that. He liked to meet Walter Cronkite. I think he died 
within the past decade. I'm sorry, Little Red. Um, his personal motto is, if you want it done, do it yourself. He's most proud of his family. His reputation in high school is not outstanding. Three words that describe him are, do it now. Okay, I don't know if your jaw just dropped, but the jaw in my heart just dropped when I read those words, do it now, because Pegasus, as you recall, had that as her personal motto, do it now. I, th I think we're seeing a sort of... Um, some cultural stability taking shape. Uh, before I go, I just want to tell, talk about one more thing. Since, you know, I'm going to have these cubes rep be representative of different personality cultures, I'm going to start replacing the cubes as they get on the map and get on the elders. Um, so, what I'm, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to have each person have a, a sort of grouping of things that should be easily recognizable as them. So, for an example, this might make it more, make more sense. Um, Pegasus, I'm going to replace all of her cubes that are on the map or in the elder pool with horses. That makes a certain sort of sense. So if you see a horse, you know, that's, that means that's, that's a unit of some sort, either an elder or a map unit that is controlled by Pegasus. All right? Pretty simple. Um, cat as in cat. Kai as in cat. Um, I want to, I'm not totally happy with her set, but I have these kind of baby, this kind of baby, um, theme going. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, I wish I had a lot more ladies with babies. I think that would be perfect, but maybe this will be the prime one, because most of the time people are only going to have one cube, and then if she gets more, then it'll be her two kids, I guess. All right.